another episode of Franco Knits, a creative podcast. My name is Devin, and this is where I document my knitting and other fiber-related crafting. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry at bdevin. Uh, <laughs> you can also find my um, Etsy shop Instagram account uh, at Franco Knits. You can find the podcast group on Ravelry if you search Franco Knits in the groups tab. And you can find my Etsy store uh, if you search Franco Phoenix uh, under shop names. All of this information is, I think, provided below, or should be anyway. Um, yeah, it was, we're in the first week of May, and things have been a little, little all over the place here this last week. Um, I have gotten more knitting done, <laughs> more than I did last week. Um, and I've got a couple things actually to show you, including at least one thing you haven't seen before, which is always, always exciting. Um, if you are a returning viewer, thanks so much for coming back. You can tell I am not in my normal podcasting space, or at least what has been my, my podcasting space for the last couple weeks. Um, and if you are a, a new viewer, uh, thanks so much for checking me out. Um, like I was saying, this is, I've gone back to my dining room for recording. Um, uh, this week is finals week at the college my husband teaches at, and we had some of his students over for dinner Monday night. Today's Wednesday. And yeah, this is the, the college that he started working at, um, for those of you who started viewing, um, within the last month or so. Um, yeah, the college he, he works at currently, they started working at in August, um, is shutting down uh, after graduation, which was, <laughs> which is, is was A, a surprise. <laughs> we, I don't think we would have picked up and moved here had we known that. Um, but yeah, it has definitely been a little bit of a, a disruption <laughs> in, in everybody's life out here. Um, but we wanted to do something nice for for his for his kids, so we had a bunch of them over earlier this week, and uh, a couple of them left some really sweet messages for him on the blackboard wall, and I I didn't have the heart to erase them to put up the usual, you know, podcast rundown, or you know, and or to you know have that be my background for you guys either. So I decided it was just just easier to, to record in the dining room instead. So instead you can look at portions of the maps that hang on our walls and, and the stuff I've got on the little buffet behind me. Not quite perhaps as, as helpful as the podcast outline on the chalkboard, but it'll be back next week. Um, yeah, so anyway. <laughs> I think that's that's more than enough discussion of why I'm recording in a different room and so if it's a little echoey I feel like I can hear an echo as I'm recording I apologize I'll try and fix that in post we'll see how much I can actually get adjusted um, speaking of apologies <laughs> um, I want to say thank you so much to all of you who left really um, really sweet comments um and and sent me really nice messages about the um situation <sighs> as i think i will refer to it now um yeah that that was that last week was a rough week um and that actually was really really helpful that that definitely made my weekend a whole lot better so so thank you um thank you for for understanding that Umming is just a part of speech. <laughs> it's just, it's normal. We all do it. And and thank you for not hating me because I don't edit them all out. <laughs> so with all that being said, I've got, let's see here. I've got a hoe to show you. I've got progress on a sweater, a little bit of progress on another sock and some other kind of fun stuff to chat with you guys about. So let's just dive right back into the knitting. I'm gonna start with 
the hoe that I just mentioned, right, a half finished object. And this is my, uh, the Franco Phoenix May Sock Club pattern and, and colorway. So here is, here is the hoe. <laughs> Right. And this is the pattern I'm calling hirondelle, um, which is the French word for swallow, like the bird. Um, honestly, naming patterns has got to be one of the hardest parts on, of the entire design process, in, in my opinion. You kind of see it there. It's got like a little bit of a, a, a lace or eyelet motif running down the front of it some knit pearl ribbing and design. The back of the sock is fairly simple, right? Mostly stocking up, but it's got the ribbing kind of running down the back as well. Heel flap and gusset. I did a Dutch heel with this design, so you get that kind of little box heel cup, which I love. I find this fits like the best of all heels um, for my feet. And then my new favorite, the sideways toe, right? Where the decreases run along the top and bottom instead of along the sides. Uh, the pattern is available on Ravelry if any of you are interested. Uh, yeah, this came as part of the, the May Sock Club, right? So why Yolanda? Why the name? I was just talking about how it's difficult to come up with good names sometimes. Um, I wanted a name for the pattern that kind of, I don't know, was somehow springy, uh, but I don't know. The pattern wasn't just like, it, there was no like flower name or, or anything like that that really just, I don't know, that made me think made sense with this. So I was thinking about things that I associate with spring and French, obviously got to keep it on theme. Um, as I was thinking of you know, French things having to do with spring. The the proverb, um, une hirondelle ne fait pas le printemps, or one swallow does not a summer make. Um, we switch seasons in English. For some reason, it becomes summer instead of spring. Um, but yeah, that came to mind. And so, right, the idea with that proverb is that, um, you know, you shouldn't jump to conclusions or appearances can be deceiving, right? Just because you see one swallow does not mean that it's necessarily summertime. Right. Um, <laughs> so that's kind of how the, the feel I got as I was knitting up this sock and I tried it on and all that. So while there's definitely lace, right, it's actually a very warm and cozy sock, right? It's not, um, not as, as cool, right, as, as you might think with a, a lacy motif on the sock. Right, and again, it looks very intricate, but it's actually a, a pretty intuitive knit. It's a really quick to memorize pattern too. So I thought that was kind of kind of appropriate. So so yeah, I'm really actually quite pleased with uh, with the pattern that I came up with for this the the May sock club and the colorway. I can show you. I'm working on the second sock right now. Things got a little bit behind. Normally, I have the entire pair done by the time I released the pattern. Didn't quite happen this month, but the uh, the colorway here, which is this really sweet um, sort of pale peach color with speckles of uh, this dark blue gray and, and green, right? Which again, just ends up giving it a little bit more depth and interest, but isn't in your face speckly, right? It doesn't detract from the pattern, which I think I talked about over the last couple weeks, kind of how that was what I was going for with some of my colorways recently, right? Slip this back on the sock blocker so you can see a little bit better what I mean. But the um, the colorway I named Sen Sunset on the Seine, right? The Seine is the river that runs through Paris. And again, I was looking through some of my old pictures and stuff to come up with some, some colorway inspirations there you go. See what I mean by the speckling, how you can still see the lace motif and the, the knit pearl motif pretty clearly, um, right? The speckling doesn't get in the way of that, but it just kind of adds a little extra interest. Um, but yeah, so sunset on the sun. I have a picture uh, I took of just that, right? Sunset um, in Paris while I was walking along the sun and 
the the river just kind of glows this really beautiful warm peachy color um, and and same thing with the stones sort of that line the embankment and all that and the, tr the, the trees and the bushes along it are just kind of glowing this really nice warm green dark green color the I don't remember which bridge it was off the top of my head um, but it's just this really gorgeous dark steel gray blue color so I don't know I saw that and decided this was this was my color way so yeah so these are my May Sock Club socks and I am in love with them <laughs> I feel like I say that every month but uh, it is definitely especially true this month I really I'm quite quite pleased with how these turned out so much so that I'm actually about to cast on a second pair of this pattern <laughs> um, I'm so in love I'm on to I'm just starting the heel flap on my second pair our second second sock so jumping to the next one of this um, which I have not cast on just yet I will be casting on soon uh, my friends Ali and Abby of the get lit and knit podcast um, are hosting a, a spring sock knit along that is running I think from May 1st to I think they're doing two months I, I want to say June 30th if that's not correct I will correct myself in a little title down here um, that they're running entirely over Instagram right um, if you first of all if you haven't seen that podcast before definitely go subscribe they haven't put out a video in a little while but that's because they are <laughs> both incredibly brilliant women right um, and very very busy women Allie is just finishing up her first year in law school and Abby is finishing up her third year in medical school right so they're a little busy <laughs> and over the last year have um, over this, this school year haven't put out too many videos because obviously a lot of their time is getting taken up with that but follow them on Instagram definitely go check out their their old videos they are fantastic and hilarious and I love them and so when they announced last week that they were doing a knit along um, over Instagram I I knew I was gonna jump in with whatever it was right um, they're my favorites I'm gonna support whatever they're doing so yeah when they said it was a sock knit along like that was yeah I, I knit so many freaking socks. It's my favorite thing to knit. So yeah, that was just a real brainer. So yeah, so I am using my new bags she built bag that I got last week. Right. Oh, got to show off the tag there. All right, gorgeous, gorgeous bag. And oh, one thing I did want to add. Um, one of the really cool things about the bags that Tracy puts up in her Etsy shop is that they are all made from uh, sort of antique linens and like like tablecloths and things like that that she she finds and so I I love that that's just such a I don't know just a cool little twist on it right the the zipper poles are all ones that she makes they're just oh, sorry I just wanted to add that and she she contacted me to let me know that um, and I just like how, how do you not love that all right but I love it love this bag I'm excited that I'm using it already um, I've got my two little extra clicky clack things here hanging off the edge that I got uh, from Maria from my fiber share uh, package right little directions for how to Kitchener um, and my little high high sharp kitty snips right Just so cute there we go. I have to say, I think I mentioned this a couple weeks ago, maybe, but I finally have the Kitchener stitch memorized after years, like literally almost a decade of sock knitting. It, I finally have it memorized. But A, it's always good to have a reminder, and B, I'm kind of loving the idea of just throwing this little tag on whatever project bag I'm using to store socks in. Just like, oh yeah, those are socks. If you want socks to knit on, go pull that out. Anyway. Um, and then the yarn that I am using is, 
actually gonna pull up that information. Right. And so the yarn that I'm using for this project, which like I said, is already, I already know is I'm doing um, my Yondel pattern, but I've already caked it up. It's it this gorgeous skein that I got from HKNT, Hand Knits and Things, uh, my friend Annie. Uh, this was part of my birthday present to myself, and this colorway is Into the Great Unknown, which I just love. All right, I just think it's such a sweet, romantic colorway. I don't know if that's the right word for it, but I'm really, really excited to see how it knits up. Um, it's one of those colorways that I feel like just changed dramatically from skein to cake, and I loved it in the skein. I love it in the cake, so I'm sure that I'm going to love it as it knits up. And then I think I'm gonna do, um, instead of the heel flap and gusset construction on this pattern, I'm gonna switch it up and do an afterthought heel. Um, we'll see, I may change my mind on that. But I've got this leftover um, Ominous Skies from Beautiful Mess Yarnworks that I think is gonna be just a really nice contrast color. Right. So we'll see, I think I'm gonna use this for the heels. I'm not entirely, I'll make that decision once I get to act the heels, basically. <laughs> if I decide to do an afterthought heel or if I decide to, um, yeah, do the standard one. I'm gonna show you real quick. This is a ridiculous thing to do, but on my, right, that is what the colorway looks like, right, in the skein. Um, also, can we talk about how amazing Annie's photography is? I seriously need to like, sit down and pick her brain about like how she does this because oh, her photography is so much better than mine. <laughs> like I need to seriously have her teach me. Annie, I need you to teach me. We need to chat. Um, but yeah, so I'm doing that for my, my May socks. Um, or rather for my Get Lit Knit spring socks and along. Right. So if you're going to knit a pair of socks from May 1st to June 30th, jump in. It's all run over Instagram. So follow them at Get Lit Knit. Um, and yeah, I mean, they've got, they've got a bunch of prizes for sure. So, I mean, it's, it's win-win, right? You're knitting a pair of socks, which is obviously the best thing in the world to knit. Um, and you have a chance to win some prizes. It's a no-brainer. Um, I don't know, at least in my world, that seems like a no-brainer. Sorry, it's early yet. Um, Jordan is off giving a final exam, and so I wanted to get a podcast in before he gets home and has to get work done. Um, so I'm still drinking my morning coffee. So continuing on, <laughs> right? With, with sock knitting, which obviously I just said is the best type of knitting. My favorite thing in the world to knit on. Uh, I do have a third pair of socks on the needles. Or I guess second pair of socks on the needles, third project to talk to you guys about. This is one that I've been working on for a minute now. And this is my, my Pixel Rise socks that I'm knitting out of mini skeins from Yarn Yarn Company. Um, and I, I love how these are turning out. They are so much fun. So let's see here. I'm doing a full, like a repeat of the colorways in the same order. And I am just starting on the green section up here. So like basically down here. I think I'm in the, the third row of the green. All right, you can see on the back, I've already got a marker placed for where I'm gonna place my afterthought heel. I'm going to do a cut and afterthought heel and it just kind of was knitting magic that my heel measurement kind of goes perfectly um, right in that last uh, section. So I get almost a full uh, repeat, like the halfway point is right where my heel goes. So I've got all the colors on the foot and then I'm going to have all the colors up on top on the leg too. Which works out nicely. For symmetry, I may not repeat that dark sort of brown gray color, um, which is kind of a shame. I kind of really love it. 
I don't know. We'll see. But I'm debating whether or not I'm going to keep these for myself or if I'm going to gift these to my sister-in-law. She tends to receive a lot of my um, <laughs> extra socks. Partially because she's she's very, very knit-worthy and um, we wear almost the same size shoe. I think her feet are just like a half size smaller than mine. So um, yeah, it works out well. I don't have to make too many adjustments as I'm just knitting up socks for them to fit her well. So we shall see if Sarah ends up with these or not. <laughs> I've got like a pile, um, yeah, a pile of socks to give to her next time I see her. I don't think she knows that yet. Diana, if you talk to her, you can just, you can tell her or not. I don't really, I don't mind one way or the other. But yeah, these are just so fun. I, I love the way these are knitting up. It's a slow project for me. This is kind of my, um, they're not quite potato chip knitting, right? It is color work, so it does take a little bit more, more thought than that. Um, but it's basically when I don't feel like knitting on my sweater and I need a break from, Right, like when I've needed a break from super pattern socks, these have been kind of my go-to. So yeah, it's just been, it's a great project to just have on hand. I've really, really been enjoying it. So the Pixel Rock, the Pixel Rocks, the Pixel Rise socks live. They, they are continuing to get worked on, but you know, I'm not putting any pressure on myself to get them done in any specific amount of time. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Speaking of the sweater, let's just continue. Let's just keep going, keep moving. Um, the sweater has grown, right? I think last week I was talking about feeling a little bit like I was in the sweater doldrums, right? Where I was, I was on the body of my sweater. Um, sorry, this is the Clark Pullover by Jane Richmond. Um, yeah, I was on the on the body of it. I was past all of the shaping and all that and just knitting miles and miles of stockinette. The only um, sort of real interest going with the, the knitting being changing every handful of rows for stripes. But look, look, it, it, it has ribbing, it has a hem. I'm on the freaking sleeve. Sorry, this is really exciting for me. If you are a, a newer viewer, if this is your first time watching and you've stuck this stuck around this long, first, thank you. Second, I am not a sweater knitter. <laughs> I tend to, to give up on sweaters because they take so long and I, I usually just don't have the patience. And I historically have not paid enough attention to sweater patterns for them to actually fit me well. <laughs> so, yeah, so I've given up typically on my sweaters, but I'm not giving up on this one and I'm on the sleeve and I'm on the sleeve deep, like shaping, right? Look, look. I'm so ridiculously giddy about this, right? I love this. Um, oh. I'm so excited. This thing is, first of all, it's huge, but I knew that going into it. It's meant to be, well, I mean, A, I'm, I'm not a small woman, right? So my sweaters are going to be rather large, but it's also meant to be worn um, with a lot of positive ease, right? So it's meant to be drapey and baggy and just really, really comfy. And I think this giant sweater definitely is going to fit the bill, right? I've tried it on. It definitely hits me at a place that I like. Right, it's not super long to the point of like being almost like a sweater dress, but it's not too short or anything. That's also been another issue of mine. I tend to stop knitting sweaters too soon. I get bored. <laughs> and impatient. I think impatient really is more of the issue. But yeah, yeah, I'm actually really, 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 really pleased with how this is turning out. Um, knitting the sleeve is a little bit tricky, right? I can knit about a quarter of the way around the sleeve before I have to stop what I'm doing and 
move the entire project around. Um, ah, that's what's scraping. All right, to keep going, but <clears throat> I don't know if this is really going to be my best solution right now, but right now I've just got it on um, the, I'm using my Chiaogu interchangeable set for these, and I've got my needles on the smallest cable I have, and like that that's fine at the moment, but I need to decrease a whole bunch of stitches. And I think the cable's gonna be too small to comfortably magic loop, which I think is what's gonna end up having to happen. So I may be switching these to a, a larger cable. Um, but yeah, it, it, I haven't given up yet. I'm kind of amazed. I've been working on this sweater for a month now and I haven't given up. Um, it is slow going. I am not a speedy, speedy, speedy knitter. Um, I'm fairly quick with socks. Everything else though, not so much. So yeah, but it, I haven't given up. I am so, I'm like, I think that's part of why I'm so excited about this sweater at the moment, if I'm being completely honest, right? Usually I would have completely given up by now, but I haven't. So there's a little bit of, of, of pride just from that alone. I, I'm not a person with a lot of, of willpower. Maybe that's the right word. Stick to itiveness. I do not stick to things. Um, yeah, I, I'm definitely somebody who gives up fairly easily if I'm being completely honest. Um, it's kind of amazing that I've gotten certain things accomplished in my life, <laughs> considering that fact. The fact that I just desperately want to give up on things when I, I get frustrated um, and absolutely tend to, but, but I didn't, I haven't given up so far. I may actually have a sweater that I will actually wear by the end of this. Um, <laughs> I, uh, oh. yeah, I don't know. Sorry, I'm I'm now I'm now knitting on the sleeve because I'm just that excited about this project. Last night was pretty nice. I um I worked on this sweater for for old. last night. No, last night I was working on my Yolanda socks. Um, two nights ago, Jordan and I <laughs> we we like to watch really bad movies, um, like especially like recent terrible movies. We'll find them however we can and then just sit and, and watch them while we do other things. And we were watching Office Christmas Party, which was terrible. I mean, delightfully terrible, but pretty awful. Um, and I got, a, I got so sucked into the terrible movie that I actually knit past where I was supposed to. I knit about almost 10 rows past where I was supposed to do start the shaping. So I had to rip out all of that progress and um, fix it this morning. So this morning, basically I got, where is it? From that bottom bulb pin to here. So that was in between dealing with some dyeing stuff, returning emails, all that kind of stuff. So it's not the quickest knit, um, for sure, obviously. It's taken me a month to get this far, but I'm, I'm enjoying it. And I think that's probably what matters most, right? Um, because Lord knows I've tried to force myself to just finish projects before, because I know I will love the, the finished object, even if I don't love the knit. And it never happens. I think that's part of why my, my Whips bookshelf is so full. Um, <laughs> you know, you just have to know what kind of knitter you are and know who you are and just kind of accept it, right? Don't, don't force yourself to be something you're not, right? Just generally in, in life. I 
actually, I don't, I don't know. That may be terrible advice. Who knows? I'll stop thinking. <laughs> I'll stop thinking about that. Um, yeah. But <clears throat> yeah, last couple things to talk about with this. I may as well segue using this little sweater thing. So I'm marking my progress, my increases, or sorry, decreases uh, with these little bulb pins. I have only recently started using these and I love them. Um, like to the point where I went on Amazon and got myself a package of a hundred of them for I think eight bucks. Um, no, I take it back. There are 500 in here. <laughs> I think I'm, I think I've got enough. I, I'm, I feel like these are going to end up like bobby pins, right? Where you buy a ton of them and then by the time you actually need them, you can't find any. They just kind of get lost to the house elves, right? But I love these and you can get them for super cheap on Amazon. I don't recommend trying to get the super, super cheap ones. I tried buying a, a package of like it was a hundred or two hundred for two dollars from China back in December and they never showed up. So spend the extra dollars to, to get the kind that you can get through Amazon Prime, not the ones that are gonna literally be coming over on a slow boat from China. And you will not regret it. I also appreciate that this pack came with like what is it, like matte black. Uh, silver, gold, and then that kind of muted brass color. I don't know. It's a silly little thing, but I actually really like that. So, love these bulb pins. Um, the other thing is, I've got this super sweet little little owl, owl stitch marker hanging out on my sweater, marking the rows there. Right? And... Right, that first little bulb pin with the beads on it. These are, they're stitch markers that I was sent by the incredibly sweet Melissa Malloy of Knitty by Nature. Um, she sent me a couple, a couple stitch markers for myself and a couple for me to give away to you guys. So I'll show you the ones that are, are mine first. So the little owl friend, for sure. And then a couple progress keepers, right? So I've got this really adorable tea bag project keeper, right? Which goes with this little buddy, this really sweet little teacup, right? Stop moving, right? Which is so cute. It's a, a little, little 3D teacup. Uh, Oh, hey, Lucy. Sorry, I don't know if you could hear that, but Lucy has decided that it is time for her to get some attention. So she just stood up and started smacking me and yelling at me. Um, and then right, this cute little sock. I love this one. This will 100% be living on my Yvonne socks for the uh, Get Lit and Knit uh, sock knit along. I'm actually just gonna go ahead and clip that to the, pro the yeah, project bag now. So yeah, so I got those. Those were for me. And then, hi Lucy, come on. Okay. There we go. We've got Lucy here. And then I've got a set, two little sets of, of progress keepers and stitch markers for you guys. So, first one here, these are all an adorable little set that goes together. All right, you've got this really cool yarn one. All right, that's a progress keeper. There are four beaded stitch markers, right? The jump rings with beads with different colors. So if you need to mark different positions in a row. And, right, this really gorgeous beaded one, right? Beaded progress keeper, right? And the cool thing about the way she packages them is that they all come with a, um, a little bulb pin too with beads on it. So there's that set. 
and then she also added in two more right this really cute beaded frog guy i love him he is a progress keeper right got the lobster claw there and then this really pretty pink lotus flower stitch key, um stitch marker right so i'm going to give away both of these together oh and she included this really cute little pen which is knitting is my jam all right all of these together i'm going to give these away um on instagram okay so i'm going to do that i'm going to run that giveaway this weekend uh, on yeah on instagram i'm going to do it on my franco phoenix instagram account um they all will set all together um so yeah definitely follow at franco phoenix on instagram for for some more details on that so that's probably going to run i think friday to sunday so yeah make sure um yeah follow at b devon and at franco phoenix for more details i'll probably be announcing them in both places uh but yeah so All right, last thing to talk about real quick before I, I let you guys go uh, is a little pile of yarn behind me. Um, I just pulled a couple little examples of what's gonna be in the shop update this week. What I've got dyed up so far anyway. Examples of what I've got dyed up. All right, so first of all, I wanna say th a huge thank you to everyone who participated in last week's shop update. Uh, my first predominantly ready to ship shop update. Um, I love, love this new style. <laughs> um, it is so much more relaxing. My weekend was, yeah, was fantastic. <laughs> um, I wasn't having to plan out um, I don't know. It just it didn't feel as, as stressful and there wasn't as much pressure to make sure that I got everything accomplished. Um, and the shipping side of things, I had, I had everything that was, every order that was placed Friday night and Saturday morning in the mail, um, you know, to the post office by noon on Saturday. So that all got shipped out right away. Um, and then from like Saturday afternoon till Monday morning, all of those got shipped out Monday more um, Monday afternoon. So I am I'm already loving the fact that I can get my order shipped out so much quicker. Like that is just like early on with the Etsy store, that was a huge point of pride for me. Like a really big goal for me was to get everything shipped out really quickly. All right. And it was starting to bug me that I was slowing down with my shipping. So I am, I'm so thrilled that I was able to get things shipped out quickly. Um, right. That is my goal. That is what I want. Right. That, that kind of customer service to me is really, really important. So anyway, I'm really thrilled that I'm doing it this way now. I'm glad I finally made that change. And so thank you to everyone who helped me make that change. <laughs> um, so I'm in the process of dying up everything for this week's uh, update, which is going to be Friday. The... Oh dear. The f yes. Today's Wednesday the 3rd, Friday the 5th. Friday the 5th of May at 8 p.m. Um, Eastern time. So I've got a couple, a handful of things left over from last week's shop update that will still be up there. Um, but I'm adding in some, some new colors too. So let's see here. I've got, I'm going to be dyeing up some more, some more, that was weird. Some more Senac. Right, I've got it here on chaussette. If you, if at any point you want a colorway on a different base, right, if I've dyed it all up on one base and you would like it on a different one, just send me a message, right? I'll either dye it up on that other base next week or um, we can do a custom order or something like that. Like I'm definitely 100% open to that. But yeah, so I'm going to be dying up some more Sinek. I think this is the only skein left from last week. 
um, Calonque, the aqu aqua one, um, sold out. So I may dye that up this week. I may save that for next week. We'll see. But yeah, so I've got that one. I've got two skeins of Lavande left on Normandy. Right? Really fun purple. Like tonal purple with some speckles and a bunch of different shades of purple. I love this one. All right. Obviously some light, some dark. Definitely leads to a, it just really knits up beautifully. I love it. Um, doo -doo -doo. Like I was showing you guys last week, I love these two colors with uh, Monet, right? Which I've got uh, two skeins left on the Paris base, right? By Stellina base. So those three together, how sweet is that? I love it. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I've got a couple skeins of Summer in Provence left, which I, I love this color, right? Um, I actually really love it with Herb Garden. I've got one skein of Herb Garden on Chaussette. I'm also dyeing it up um, on Normandy this week, which is the two-ply. They're all fingering weight, so, but it's just kind of slight variations in that. But I really love it, right? I love these two together. Right? Or another skein of Summer and Provence. Kind of see the other colors there together, right? Love how that is together. Love that combo. That's actually pretty cool. Yep, so I've gotten that. There's gonna be more uh, herb garden, like I said. I'm dying up a bunch of Piguan or Peony on Chaussette. Right, really cute um, pale pink speckly colorway. Uh, pink and then mauve speckles as well. Right. I want to show you this with. I think Piguan is great with Herb Garden. I like it with Lavande. I think it's super sweet with Saint Onc. Right? Those three together. All right, with Monet, it's actually really cute too. Right, pop that all, all together. Um, <laughs> and then. Last but not least, I'm gonna be dyeing up some more iris as well. Here I've got it on Normandy. I haven't decided yet. This is part of my um, job for the afternoon is so I'm gonna be dyeing up some more iris. And I haven't decided quite yet if I'm gonna do that on Chaussette or if I'm gonna do that on Normandy. I've got it here on Normandy. I love this color right on Normandy. I'm gonna do it on Normandy. <laughs> Thank you for participating in that with me. Um, it's just a really cool colorway, right? I really like it. Uh, I love the yellow, the navy, and the deep dark purple. And just kind of how they blend together. It's almost got a watercolor-like effect, right? Um, I kind of desperately want to make a pair of socks out of this. I think these would make really great vanilla socks. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I feel about that combo. Not bad. Yeah. I don't know. I just kind of love it on its own. It does, um, ugh, I don't have a scan of it with me up here. Um, it does go really well with Slate Roof. I will say that. Mm. Mm. I feel like there's too much competition there. <laughs> yeah, I love Iris. Uh, so yeah, that's what I've got so far this week. I may play around. There may be like a free swim, one of a kind sort of colorway, something new. We'll see. I may, I may hold off until next week for playing around. I don't know. I need to order some more bear yarn. I'm running a little low. So yeah, that's what's going on. Um, Trying to think if there's anything else I need to tell you guys. I think that's about it. But yeah. Um, 
other than that, I mentioned in terms of blather, Jordan is finishing up the school year this week. Um, he's already started on his new job where he's going to be working from home. So I'm going to have to find a, a good way to, <laughs> to podcast while he's home all day. Uh, we shall see how that works out. I usually do not like podcasting when he's home, but I'm obviously going to have to get over that since we're both going to be working from home now. <laughs> um, yeah. But there we go. That's life. It's a minor, minor issue, really, when it comes down to it. So... I think that's it for this week. Uh, thank you so much for spending a little bit of time with me while I talk to you about my knitting and show you some colorways and things like that. Um, yeah, I hope you have a good week. I hope you you have some exciting knitting progress like I apparently did this week. <laughs> and I will see you guys again next week. Bon tricot. Happy knitting. Bye.